If you have a grain father glycol chiller, you're going to want to watch this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a ITC1000F from Inkbird to control the chiller to work with any fermenter that you've got in your arsenal. So you're definitely going to want to see this one. How's it going? My name is Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see product reviews, and how-to videos just like this one, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. I don't want to waste any time. I want to jump right into the video. Let's go take a look at what we need to pull this off. All right, so let's take a look at what we're going to need. So first thing we're going to need, this is really one of the very important parts. We are going to need a ITC1000F not 230 volts, not 120 volts. We need a 12 volt version. So that's very important. You want to make sure you get a 12 volt version of this. And the reason being is the grandfather does provide 12 volt power out from the chiller to control the factory controller. So we're going to use that same power to control the inkbird. So we got that. The other thing that's really important is this uh, M12 connector. And it is a M12 sensor connector, and they're kind of hard to find. I'll leave a link down below. I actually wound up buying some off of AliExpress, and I've got probably like four, four or five of them. So if someone is in dire need and can't find them anywhere or can't get them shipped to them or whatever, hit me up uh, at an email. I'll put the email down here, and uh, we'll see if we can hook something up and uh, take care of you. Uh, the other thing that I've got is a length of 22 gauge wire. I definitely recommend 22 gauge just because of the size of the connectors on the M12 connection. Uh, this can be any length that you want. I've got it really short just for this purpose of this video. And then I've also taken about three inches of wire. We're going to need a jumper wire for the connection inside of the ITC. We've also got the sensor wire for the ITC as well as a screwdriver. And you want one with a very small tip. This one has an interchangeable flat blade, Phillips head, and you're definitely gonna want that. So I just wanna take a quick second to thank all of our Patreons, helping us keep going with videos and purchasing equipment and supplies to do these type of videos. So thank you very much, I really appreciate it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is pull the back off of the Inkbird controller. And on the back here, you can see the wiring diagram. Hopefully you can see that. So there's a 12 volt power supply here. And then we got the sensor and we got heating and cooling. So what we're gonna focus on is the supply, the power supply, the sensor and the cooling. Now in keeping with traditional 12 volt wiring, I'm going to call the black the ground and the red the hot wire, which is what the, the normal configuration is for that. So the Inkbird does not care which end the ground goes into. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and put the ground in over here and you'll see why here in just a moment. So put the ground in, tighten it down, put a little pull on it, make sure it's nice and tight. And then I'm going to put the hot wire into the terminal next to it, which is this one right here. And I'm also going to stick our jump wire in there at the same time. So I'm going to put both wires in at once because we're going to need that here in just a second. So put those in, tighten it down nice and tight. Make sure we've got everything connected properly. All right, and then we've got our sensor wire and that we're going to we're going to designate that as the, the yellow wire. So we're going to take the yellow wire and we're going to stick it over here in the cooling terminal and we're going to put it in the switched side of the terminal. So we want this to switch on and off with the inkbird control. So I'll go ahead and put that in. Make sure it's connected well. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to take power from the input over here and we're going to put it into this side of the switch. So basically what's going to happen is when the inkbird kicks on, it will send power through this from this terminal over to this terminal through the switch inside and then it'll actually send a signal, a 12 volt signal back to the grandfather chiller and that will activate the pump which is going to send glycol to your chiller. Okay. So we've got those wired up. Let's go ahead and wire up the sensor and it's very simple doesn't matter which one you plug in there either it's just a real quick connection they go in either side right next to the power wires put those in tighten them down all right that's connected okay now let's take a look at this connector and this is one of the important things here this connector, how it connects and how the terminals are. And I'm going to go ahead and take it apart so I can show you on the back side here. It unscrews 
there's strain relief on the back side here for the wiring. So here's what we've got. We've got a notch up here. If you can see that on the video there, hopefully I'll get it where you can see it. There's, so there's a notch here and then there are three pins. So this notch is a locator notch to keep these pins in the proper orientation. So now the 12 volt power that comes out of the chiller goes to this terminal here. The ground goes over here and then the signal wire goes over here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this through the connector first so that we can make sure that we have everything done properly. Don't forget to do that. If you do, then you have to take everything back apart again. <laughs> so don't forget to do that. All right, so now we're gonna use the same wiring convention that we did on the other end. And we're going to find the pin that is farthest away from the, the notch there. So that would be this pin right here. So that's this pin and that's this notch right here. So we're gonna go ahead and put the red wire, which is our, we've already established from the previous connection. That's gonna be our 12 volt wire. All right, so we've got our red supply wire hooked up to the terminal that is opposite of the pin. The pin is right here. That terminal's right there. Now we're gonna hook up the ground wire, which is this pin right here. So that will be the one that is next to that one, which is this one right here on the back side. So go ahead and hook the ground up to that one. All right, we got the black wire in there. Let me go ahead and tighten that down. Nice and tight, make sure everything's in there good. And then finally, we've got our signal wire, which is the one that's up next to the pin. So that would be the one that's right here on the top side there. I am not a watchmaker. <laughs> All right, we'll tighten that down. All right, so we got everything hooked up. So we've got the red wire for the hot wire, which is opposite the pin here. Ground is over here, signal is there. So now we can put this back together. Let's slide all these things in there. And then this, this collar here tightens down. And then if you're familiar with the grandfather chiller, this, this collar here actually helps you fasten the connector into there. And then this strain relief actually has some teeth that contract into the wire. So tighten it down real nice and tight. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's fairly simple. For those of you that are interested in the wiring diagram, you can pause the screen now. This is the wiring configuration in case you want to have it to come back and take a look at. Go ahead and take a look at that. And uh... All right, so we've got our wires all hooked up. We'll put our cover back on the back. Put our screw back on. I'm not covering how to install this into an enclosure. That's something that, you know, if you want to venture on that on, on your own, you certainly can. All right. So there we are. We're all wired up. Now let's go hook this thing up to the grandfather chiller and I'll show you how it works. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in, line up the notch here and uh, get it plugged in. I do like the 90 degree on these because when you push your grandfather chiller up against the wall, I don't like how these things kind of get bent over. So not something that I really like a lot. And oh, look at there. We did something right. Power's on. All right, let's uh, get this thing swung around a little bit here. And uh, I'm going to turn it on, turn on the number two, which is what we've got going on here. And I will go ahead and set this thing so that we can turn this on and show you that it works. Go ahead and get it into temperature set mode. Button, push it, drop it all the way down to 58 degrees. And as you can hear, it's running. And I've got just a loop running through here so we can see the glycol running through. But as you can see, this line is starting to chill down pretty good. So that is pretty much the gist of that. I do want to let you know in contacting Grainfather to put this whole thing together, they did tell me that they are currently working on a standalone controller for the chiller. So be on the lookout for that to come out. They said they may send me one for me to show it to you all and check it out. But I uh, just wanted to let you know that. And if you enjoyed the video, found it helpful, give us a thumbs up. It really does help us on YouTube to let them know that you enjoy our videos. Thanks again for watching. This has been Brian for Short Circuited Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.